The final score, Dagenham and Redbridge nil. Wrexham 4. I'm Mark Griffiths, Wrexham AFC, and if your idea of podcasting fun is to listen to a bloke listing attacks by Wrexham and what happened at the end of them, you've come to the right place, because this is essentially what this podcast is going to be all about. This was a terrific performance by Wrexham. After the disappointment of dropping two points on Saturday, well, I mean, listen to Phil Parkinson's post-match interview firstly, because it's very, very revealing indeed. He talks about how the team got together, talks about how they need to have more of a killer instinct and drive on to finish a game once we go one up. And also the importance of getting on the front foot straight away and really making a statement. And that is exactly word for word what Wrexham did at Dagenham. Please, let's remember, Dagenham are a good team. They've got a decent chance of getting in the playoffs this season. They beat Notts County 10 days ago, and you really don't need me to remind you about how they broke our dreams on each of the last two seasons on the last day. So, they're good, but my word, we absolutely outclassed them. And I'm not saying that to be insulting to them in any way, but Wrexham were fabulous. Four changes from the team that drew at Maidenhead. Rob Lainton came in in goal, having recovered from his bout of illness. At the back, Max Cleweth made way. Owen O'Connell came in. Luke Young was rested, and that is a, a rarity, eh? But it's even, even the most key players need a break every now and again. James Jones came in, and up front, Ollie Palmer, after three games out of the starting lineup, came in. And Sam Dorby was given a break to the bench. I'll tell you what. It was a heck of a performance from the very start. That 11 gelled immediately. Wrexham scored in the sixth minute, and it's a cliche, but even that early in the game, it was coming. Wrexham from the very start were driving forwards and causing issues and opened up the scoring when a patient move ended with a nice little pass to send O'Connell round the back of the defence. Wrexham's centre-backs, especially O'Connell, looking so comfortable coming forwards, and it was a bit too easy, really, to work the overload and feed him in. He had lots of time, and he measured a lovely cross, feeding it into the near post, on the ground, Palmer arriving and striking the ball cleanly inside the near post from six yards out. Wrexham taking a deserved lead, as I said, and Palmer really, really looked up for this. You know, he's had his problems of injuries the last few weeks. My goodness me, this was the old Ollie Palmer. Dagenham had probably their best spell of the match in response to this for about five, six minutes and carved out a couple of chances. Hare driving a good ball from his own half down the right channel. The massive target man, who's prolific as well, Inny Effiong, managed to get goal side of Toza and Toza couldn't get round him to deny him. But Effiong, with every stride, was making his angle tighter and tighter as he drove into the goal mouth. So he decided to pull the ball back and his pullback was just behind Bird, who was about seven yards out. He stretched backwards and dug out a shot, but couldn't put it on target, and the opportunity was gone. In the 20th minute, a free kick in midfield on the right, whipped in well by Weston, who has good delivery from set pieces, and the centre-back Josh Hare getting up around the penalty spot, but a weak effort straight at Lainton. It was a decent sight of goal. Looking at the replays, I think it might have hit his shoulder rather than his head, thus the poor contact and the easy save. And to be frank, that was pretty much it for Dagenham in terms of attacking threat until the last kick of the game, which tells you something about the domination of Wrexham. And I emphasise the domination of a really strong team at home. <laughs> this is great stuff. So Wrexham took the, the bat on up again. James Jones unbelievably unlucky after Hare partly cleared. James Jones had really well 25 yards out. First need to win the ball back and pop the ball into Lee. A lovely first time return pass by Lee. And Jones in the right channel drove in a shot which took a deflection off Ling which totally deceived Justin. He was heading in the wrong direction, took a flick off him, hit the inside of the right post and then bounced out again. You know, on, on another day, it could easily have just hit Justin and bounced in for an own goal. As it is, it's span behind him. And Justin, well, I mean, I've got to say, look at it again. It's a fabulous piece of uh, reflex goalkeeping because he lunges when he can't really see the ball and manages to grab it and trap it against the ground safely. But he could easily have scored an own goal simply by lunging like that. So, OK, credit where it's due. But an incredible let-off, I must say, in commentary. I, I, I called the goal. I thought he'd scored off the post. 
Wrexham kept going a couple of minutes later, Mullen teed up Cannon, and from 25 yards, he hit, looked for the top left corner, couldn't quite keep it down. The second goal, again, was inevitable, and it came in the 39th minute, a really nice set-piece goal. Excellent delivery by Elliot Lee from the right-hand side, and Jordan Tunnicliffe about eight yards out with a lovely glancing header across the keeper and inside the unguarded far post, Wrexham 2-0 up. It could easily have been three by the break. Maybe should have been. Toza with a long throw. Weston unintentionally flicking it onto the far post perfectly for Ollie Palmer, who attacked it, got a great leap in over the top of the defenders, and having done a difficult pass from about three yards out, looked to head it into the top corner and put it over. He was so frustrated with himself, and quite frankly, this was an easier chance than the two goals he would score. But Wrexham two up at half time and looking really, really comfortable. The second half began exactly like the first. Within 45 seconds, Wrexham had got a shot off on goal. On this occasion, it was Barnett doing really well to rip a nasty cross in. It was headed away from under the bar, and Mullen took a swing at it from 15 yards, but mishit it way over the bar. A difficult take for him, to be fair. But four minutes later, Barnett was involved again, and there was no reprieve for Dagenham. Barnett allowed much too much space 25 yards out, cuts inside and drilled a flat ball into the goal mouth. Tunnicliffe was the target, having already been up there for a set piece. A clattering tackle comes in behind him, which, you know, if Palmer hadn't got onto the ball, might have led to a penalty shout, but there was no need because Palmer on the pivot hit it beautifully first time anyway from six yards out and drilled the ball home and Wrexham were 3-0 up and looked very, very comfortable. <laughs> Palmer on the hour very nearly got his hat trick. Another nice piece of play by Wrexham. Palmer marauding forwards, popping the ball inside. Lee with a delicious back heel in the crowded penalty area, straight back to Palmer, who took a touch, bore down on goal, and then struck a close range shot, aiming for the bottom left corner. Ling managed to stretch as he came across from the other side of the box and just about get a touch to deflect the ball wide, and the hat trick opportunity was gone. But again, like I've already been saying, the next goal always felt like it was coming. And it came halfway through the second half. O'Connell doing really well to intercept on the halfway line and then drive forwards himself. He fed Lee as Wrexham broke forward swiftly in the transition. And Lee, well, I mean, isn't it the hallmark of a great player that <laughs> he gets the ball, he does the simple thing quickly and efficiently, and despite all the fancy stuff players do, that's how the real players are differentiated by their ability to just get the basics right. He helped on beautifully first time to Mendy. We made a great run between the full back and the centre back. Mendy drove into the box, carried it forwards. The keeper came out, and from the corner of the six yard box, Mendy just got a lovely little dink in. The keeper went down to his right, so he dinked it across him, over his legs, and inside the far post. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Wrexham really in the comfort zone now. 20 minutes left, Sam Dolby came on to give Mullen a break, and then Wrexham were at it again. Lainton with a great ball forwards from the edge of the area, picking up Palmer, who brought the, down nice, the ball down nicely on the edge of the box with his chest, and then hit it as it dropped, but pulled it rather badly wide from the edge of the box. Wrexham a minute later, again going amazingly close. Dolby doing really well again, as he often does to cause a bit of confusion and create a loose ball 25 yards out. And then he himself helped it on to Lee. Another good ball by Lee in the penalty area to feed Jones in the right channel. And Jones, again, struck it well. And it hit the inside of the post, flew out and hit a defender. And again, I mean, it's so bizarrely similar to the first chance that Jones had, which hit the post. The defender... Managed to get it away. Could easily just hit him and bounce straight back into the net. But Jones denied once more by the post. And no lucky rebound. McFadgen came on to give Mendy a rest. Wrexham continued to push on though. Again, Barrett's looking dangerous. Helping the square ball. Lee popping another through ball. But McFadgen in down the left channel. And he drove it powerfully into the bottom left cut right corner. From close range. Good save by Elliot Justin. Who got down well to parry it away. Two minutes left, Lee was given a break, Jordan Davis came on, and with the last kick of the game, and as the second added minute ended, Dagenham made maybe their best chance of the match. It was good work by Robinson, prodding it forwards, and the pacey substitute Ibby found himself sprinting in between the centre-backs and clear on goal. His touch was heavy, Lainton was very quick and decisive off his line to come and save at his feet, 
and the final whistle blew and Wrexham had an absolutely superb 4-0 away victory under their belt. Some were four points clear at the top of the table. Looking through the performances, I mean, <laughs> wow, there are some good ones. I mean, Leighton, let's break this up into two parts. In terms of actual goalkeeping, really, the only thing he had to do that stretched him at all was that intervention with the last kick of the game, but he was quick and decisive. However, he deserves praise for the fact that his distribution was excellent. He teed up a couple of good chances with really accurate long, long passes from the edge of his own area. He strikes the ball so cleanly, but his accuracy was great too. And so, yeah, he was a very reassuring presence at the back. The three centre-backs I thought were excellent. O'Connell, especially early on when Dagenham were having a little bit more threats, defended extremely well, but he brought the ball forwards well. Got that assist for the first goal, but his, his composure on the ball was impressive and gave us that Max Kluwer feeling again of like a centre-back looking to link up with players further up the pitch. Toza, again, apart from when Effion got him behind him, defensively very solid. He's a nice front foot player, isn't he, Toza? He, he, you know, when we're moving the ball around patiently, he's looking to play that diagonal to move play on, and his passing was very accurate on this occasion. And then Tunnicliffe was rock solid, got the goal, and again, just strong and aggressive and handled things very, very well. Effion, apart from that nip in behind Toza, you could see why he scores goals, but the three centre-backs handled him extremely well. The wing-backs were outstanding. Ryan Barnett, Barrett even, sorry, that Barnett playing for Maidenhead last week with Barrett has really confused me. Ryan Barrett, excellent performance. I mean, he showed signs of this on Saturday, but this was class. He was direct, quick. He comfortably had the beating of Miles Weston when he ran at him, and I was surprised Dagenham weren't sending people over to try and help out more. But he was getting crosses in at will. Good quality crosses. You know, we hear people talking about his good distribution and good delivery from the flanks. Wow. Yeah, he certainly gave us exactly that and got an assist. Although I was amazed Dagnum allowed him so much space for that assist, considering how good he was. But uh, he was, like I said, a constant threat. And I'd also say, and I don't know if I'm just imagining this, whether it was worked on or if it's just the street smarts of the players, but... Last Saturday, I said in the podcast, didn't I, that I felt in some ways he hadn't quite assimilated himself to our style of play. And he was sort of running forwards, looking for runners, but we weren't making those sorts of runs. And he'd sometimes run into a cul-de-sac. He played well, but then he'd have to come back out again and pass it backwards. Well, on this occasion, that neither of those things really happened. I think maybe things have been sorted out a little bit. And Jones, who, of course, as we know, with Ford, loves to make those steaming overlaps and come around the back of Ford to give him an option wasn't making those runs I think we were deciding to let Barris have his run at the wing back drive him backwards and, and then decide whether he wants to cross or pull it back to Jones on the edge of the area so that worked well I thought we, we linked him into the play a lot more and he looked very exciting I've got to say Mendy on the left absolutely brilliant again just up and down, up and down constantly. Like Barrett, no problems defensively. And then like Barrett, going forwards, extremely threatening. He was more making runs inside, getting into the left channel, getting into the box as he did with his goal. But again, great performance from Mendy. The centre mids, wow, just ran the game. Absolutely ran the game. Firstly, Cannon. Oh, that guy, that guy can play football. I mean, whoa. He was just everywhere constantly putting out fires constantly intercepting he's certainly not a defensive midfielder in the old-fashioned you know the traditional brad walker danny williams big bloke who's a physical presence but he nips in and reads the play so well and it's constantly uh, winning the ball back for us and then his use of the ball is so good he's such a good technical player that even under extreme pressure, he can still have calmness, look up and play the right pass. What an acquisition he is. James Jones, as ever, constant energy and very unlucky not to score one or two of those shots that hit the post as well. But again, he's just he's a he's valuable glue in that midfield, making covering runs and, and committing players from the other side with his movements. Elliot Lee, you know what? He was very, very very good and, and I think it actually took me a little bit of time to fully appreciate how good he was Whew, I mean 
when you look at the highlights again, the number of chances where he plays the final ball. And some of his final balls didn't work. And in commentary, I, I said, you know, I, I like the way he's playing. He's looking very threatening. He's looking really good. But the final balls are ambitious and not quite coming off. When you look back, yes, they were. He set up loads of chances. He was terrific. And as ever, this newfound scurrying back to make crucial tackles was there. Oh, wonderful play by Lee. So Wrexham in the midfield, really, I mean, just completely controlled the game. And then up front, wow. Mullen had a quiet game, actually, oddly enough. Uh, we'll, we'll allow him that. He had a couple of nice moments. And, you know, frankly, his threat sometimes is a good distraction to the other side's defences. Palmer, though. Back at his best. Terrific. Physically dominant. Did well in the air. Got the two goals. Had that swagger about him. He was terrific. He really was. As the game went on, I wasn't sure if he was a little tired. Because he hadn't played 90 minutes for quite a while. He was dropping deeper and deeper. And I'm thinking, you're not going to get that hat trick. He wasn't helped by the fact that for the last 10 minutes... It, it, it nearly turned into West Germany against Austria in the 1982 World Cup. You know? Just... There was, there was, Dagenham just didn't want to be punished anymore. We were happy to just have a bit of a break, and there was an awful lot of passive passing, especially by us, just to, just to run down the clock almost with nothing to play for. We got a 4 0 away win. Why push ourselves further? Uh, and it was a shame for Palmer, of course, because he probably liked us to be going ahead and scared him in the box, see if he can get the hat trick. But he was excellent. The subs played their part as well. Dolby, as I said, was a good disruptive element. Uh, when McFadden came on, he made a couple of good aggressive forays and was unlucky not to get that first goal. When will he get his first goal for Axum? He's come close so many times. And Jordan Davis, in the brief time he was on, again, was ambitious with the ball and again was aggressive without it. So fabulous stuff. Wrexham, four points clear, top of the table, and that was a performance. We just need to keep going now. South End on Saturday, and Wrexham just need to keep building on that. Um, I had an interesting time looking at uh, doing the Wrexham Anorak, and I think a couple of points from that really need to be mentioned. Firstly, that we tied both our longest ever unbeaten league run of 24 games, not you know, longest since we joined the Football League, longest of all time. We've we've the, we beat the longest since we joined the Football League a while ago. So that's a remarkable, remarkable achievement. 24 games over half the season. We also <coughs> tied our all-time record for most away league games unbeaten. 12. Again. Wow. <laughs> Again, over half the away matches that we will play in the season absolutely no it's not it's 20 yeah half and half yeah yeah we have faith in your maths mark but a more obscure and striking figure palmer got his 15th and 16th league goals of the season so he and mullen have both got 15 or more league goals this season and they both got 15 or more league goals last season this is the first time in our entire history that the same two strikers have got to that mark in consecutive seasons. No pair of strikers have ever, ever done that. And in fact, I mean, both of them have achieved that. The last Wrexham striker to score 15 league goals in more than one season was Gary Bennett in the mid-90s. Just to put a bit of context on how fantastic this team is and how downright tasty that front two are, and Sam Dolby as well, we are spoiled. This was a supreme display of the benefits of squad depth we were able to do this to Dagenham and Redbridge like I said a, a serious team <clears throat> despite well I mean heck how many players did we not use Mark Howard who has played most of the season put the stop of the league Max Clueth Aaron Hayden Anthony Ford Callum McFadgen Luke Young Tom O'Connor Jordan Davis only put in two minutes <laughs> Sam Dolby, I've probably missed out some obvious examples, but goodness me, if you can have none of those players in your starting eleven and do that, you've probably got decent squad depth, haven't you? I'm happy. With a final score, and we catch that happy, Laszlo wants to go, Laszlo, I'm coming now, son. Don't worry, I'm finished. Oh, hey, look at that. Not happy at all. With a final score, I beg it out quickly, of Dagnum and Redbridge nil, Wrexham 4. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC. Laszlo, I'm on my way, baby.